Hello, my name is Simeon Neil Asher, and the trigger point of the week this week, I thought we'd explore T4 syndrome. Now, T4 syndrome, you won't find a lot about it uh, in many places on the internet, but it's certainly something that we see clinically. Um, um, there is some debate uh, amongst the pr practitioners, therapists, how it exists, if it exists, but certainly in my experience, I've seen it. Um, so it's, it's a kind of rare condition. We don't see it that often, and it's really characterized by uh, pain in that T4 area um, and radiations down the side of the arm and to both hands usually um, and it is often a, a result of a sympathetic a change to the sympathetic flow uh, through that T4 between T2 and T5 actually a nervous system um, so it, it's sort of upper middle back pain uh, one quick thing that you can do just to check is you can run your fingers down the spine a few times. Now, doing that either side of the spine usually makes it red, right? As you know, it flushes red and then uh, the red goes away and, and it leaves white. But if there's a T4 syndrome, as you come down, what you'll see is that the red sort of accumulates and stays in that T4 area. And that shows you there's some stasis, some lymphatic issues, and possibly, probably some kind of sympathetic outflow. So T4 syndrome, sympathetic kind of uh, neurological aspect to that. So, so in terms of the symptoms, it's really a cluster of symptoms. It's, it's usually fairly subjective. So it's symptoms into both hands usually, uh, a history of sort of intermittent or posterior thoracic pain, usually pain as the patient drops their chin forwards. And usually the symptoms get worse last thing at night or after, as we said, involving thoracic flexion or cervical flexion, slumping forward, sitting at a desk for long periods of time. Now, it's possible that we're seeing a bit more of this lately because people are on their mobile phones a lot and they're sort of sitting and leaning forward. Um, so generally, flat seems to be, lying flat seems to be the position of ease. But, but, but it's this kind of what we call a glove distribution of sensor, sensory changes in the hand. Not a stocking and glove, as, as you would see in a kind of a diabetic uh, neuropathy, but a kind of glove sensation. And look, here's the thoracic spine, T4 around about the sort of near the apex, uh, towards the apex of the, of the thoracic kyphosis. So in terms of objective assessments, there've been some studies, and I've put one up here for you here, but, but generally people talk about changes in the thoracic spine uh, function, mobility, uh, thoracic spine, the, the kind of kinematic sort of changes in the thoracic spine. Um, and, and as we said before, it's this kind of glove uh, sensation, um, loss of sensation traditionally. Um, and, and a positive slump test. So when you drop someone forward and you drop their head forwards, they'll feel it sort of uh, recreate the symptoms. So in terms of diagnosis, as I said, uh, stro skin stroking, looking at that T4 zone, that's really important. Um, and sort of differentially diagnosing it from, from a range of other conditions. For example, obviously thoracic outlet syndrome, that can mimic it. Uh, sometimes even cervical thoracic uh, radiculopathy, so, so thoracic nerve irritation. Also, interestingly, a lot of trigger points in, in refer down the hand as well. For example, the scalene, which we're going to explore later, some of the, the trigger points involved. Um, so the scalenei, so I would definitely look at, say, infraspinatus, uh, even things like latissimus dorsi, other trigger points there that can, that can sometimes be a differential diagnosis. Intercostal neuralgia uh, and viscerous somatic pain sometimes can uh, be a differential diagnosis. Ankylosing spondylitis, uh, of course, uh, if you've ever seen that, you'll know um, it's you know a progressive disease. So in terms of treatment, well, trigger point therapy is really really effective for for treating, especially looking at the the sort of thoracic erector spiny. So we're going to look at those shortly and we'll ask my colleague Dr. Gerwin to have a look with us. Um, and then some localized, some, some, some HVT techniques or high velocity thrusts can be very, very useful. I usually do them in several different positions, sitting lift off, uh, the dogs and the, the prone sort of, uh, dogs is a, an osteopathic term for a, it's a long story. Um, uh, but generally to manipulate the area and to work on the muscles around it uh, to improve the function and of course to look at the sympathetics as well. Curiously, it can take a while to get better. They, they, they're not instant uh, hit wonders, these T4 syndromes. Usually, in my experience, two to three months, 
uh, if you do it properly. Otherwise, they can be there a long time. And as we said, easily upset if people are sitting uh, at work. In, so you have to look at the other sort of ergonomic issues as well. So let's have a look at the software and, and, and explore some muscles together. So I thought what we do now is we'll, we'll have a look at the, the Trigger Points 3D software and let's explore some of those sort of differential diagnosis together, look at some of those sort of the trigger points with each other. So let's, um, let's start here with the scalings because the scalings is certainly one that we, uh, we looked at. And of course, as you can see, the scaling map is incredible. It really does look like a C5-6 radiculopathy um, into the thumb, into the index finger. Uh, pain can come in the upper thoracic spine, also a sort of a periscapular band just medial to that scapula all the way down the arm there. So that's definitely one of them. Let's just have a quick look at some shoulder muscles as well. As I said to you, infraspinatus, it's another differential diagnosis. Uh, so the trigger points would be here in the infraspinatus, but actually the map, as you can see, runs all the way down the back of the hand into the sort of uh, into the middle finger there, the middle finger. Um, and latissimus dorsi equally coming down into the, the ulnar portion of the shoulder, but uh, of the arm, of course, but, but looking there uh, in the sort of mid, mid back as well. So, so they're the sort of main sort of differential diagnosis. But, but in terms of treatment, what I want to show you now is the, we're going to look at the, uh, the, the spine because the erector spiny, oh, let's have a look here, spine and torso. The erector spiny, absolutely pathognomonic for the for looking at the uh, thoracic outlet syndrome. So if we come and look at the, uh, interestingly, if we're looking at the, the iliocostalis group, and that's one of the groups to look at, there's, there's often an anterior radiation pattern there. Don't forget that sometimes chest pain, anterior chest pain can be coming from these posterior structures. And here's the iliocostalis thoracis. So I thought what we'll do is we'll have... Uh, my wonderful colleague, uh, Dr. Bob Gowen, uh, talked to us a little bit about the trigger points in the erector spiny and how they can be helpful. The long erector spiny muscles. These muscles are stressed when the back is not supported so that long periods of sitting, for example, at a computer without back support may activate these. They can be overloaded by lifting, carrying, bending. These muscles are involved and activated in extension of the back and the multifidi in intervertebral stabilization. Thank you, Dr. Gerwin. So, um, so again, we can go on to some functional anatomy, needling and safety inside the software itself. So that's the uh, erector spiny. Look, well worth looking at in terms of needling if you do that technique. Amazing results with thoracic outlet, with, sorry, with amazing results with T4 syndrome. So as we said, articulation, uh, and then follow all of that with some exercises of the thoracic spine to encourage some flexion, some extension, uh, with some towel also or on a, on a fit ball as well. They can be really helpful. So T4 syndrome, I hope you found that useful. Uh, look forward to seeing you again. Join us again or, or have a look. at. We've got plenty of videos now on uh, Facebook, uh, on YouTube. Uh, subscribe to one of our channels. We'd be more than happy and well to welcome you there. We've got a lot of information. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time to watch us. Over and out.